Hi everyone, this is Sanjana from Mockyat and to help you with your VAT and personal interview prep for IIMs and other top B schools, uh, we are coming up with a series where we are going to be giving details of the 5 curated news articles that we provide on Mockyat.com. So you can just uh, log into Mockyat.com, the link is in the description and in the first pinned comment and you can read these articles in full detail and understand. What we've tried to do here is, we've tried to put up curated articles which are around things which a manager should know and which will essentially come up in your interview or your could come up also in your VAT. So these will be around national or international news of importance as well as the business news, news around sectors, around the economy which we would be expected to know. So today, for example, some things which have happened is S&P Global has rated India as BBB minus and they've also explained that if the fiscal deficit reduces, then our rating could potentially go up. Now, because of the success of the T20, BCCI is considering launching a tier 2 white ball tournament. It's probably going to be a T10. Since Article 370, uh, the abrogation has been approved by the Supreme Court. Uh, we also want you to know about some other states other than JNK, which is not a state of course now, but where there are special provisions and what are these provisions around. This is again potentially a topic which could come up especially in VAT given that the Supreme Court decision has just been taken up. Now the US Federal Reserve, which is their central bank, which is similar to the RBI in India, uh, but obviously, you know, US being the top economy, uh, there are imp uh, there is there is an impact or there are repercussions of what they do. So they are basically looking to cut the interest rates and uh, our fourth article talks about how that impacts the Indian economy. And lastly, Ukraine is getting a nod for its EU membership, but unfortunately European countries are not looking to give any more aid for buying weapons. So now let's look at these news articles in a little bit more detail. Again, the link for the news at Mockat is there in the description and in the first pinned comment. So you can go there and you can also read all of these five news articles or any which are interesting or more relevant for you. So the first one, which is around S&P Global, they've rated India at BBB minus. Uh, they're saying that while the economy is doing well, a critical parameter, which is the fiscal deficit, is currently on the weaker side. It's something which is expected to increase to 3.1% in the financial year 2024, which is 23 to 24. Now, the government is actually looking to keep the fiscal deficit somewhere around 4.5% of GDP by FY26, which is financial year 2026. The initial aim was to keep it at 3%, but then because of the pandemic, not just India, multiple countries, the fiscal deficit, which is the government lending as a percentage of GDP, has increased as countries have had to borrow. Aside from this though, uh, S&P has said that, you know, our GDP growth has been pretty robust. It was expected to be at 6.9, but it's expected to grow at 6.4%, which also is quite high. Other economic, in other, other economic, sorry, in other economic parameters, again, India is doing well and S&P is also agreeing that India will become the third last, largest economy by 2030. But for us to get our rating higher, we need to work on the fiscal deficit. Again, very important, especially for commerce grants. Now let's look at the news in the sports area. Now the IPL, as I said, has worked really well. So BCCI is considering launching a T10 format, which would be like a tier two tournament, but a white ball tournament. Now they are going to figure out who can participate? What are the ages of the players going to be? What is the tender process going to be for all the buyers of the teams, right? Whether it's going to be a T10 format or will they continue with a T20 format? And what are the venues expected to be like? This is something which they are anticipating will start in September 2024 or maybe about a in a month from then. With this, what can also happen is BCCI, while that is the richest cricket body, other cricketing boards can also look to sustain financially as they would also receive money with the players who are being essentially, you know, purchased on contract. Now, the next thing, looking beyond JNK, which are the other states which have special provisions and what is the nature of these provisions? So we have a quasi federal sort of structure where we have a central government and we have state governments, but the central government is more powerful than the state governments. 
Now, Article 370, which was where Kashmir had special powers, once that was passed, there were also other articles which were passed, which created special provisions for at least nine states. But these provisions were actually temporary, transitional and special. However, there was no time limit given for, you know, how temporary it is, but it was said to be valid for a crisis period. And this was something which was brought about after independence. So there's a bunch of other states as well, which have some or the other special provisions. There are states in the Northeast and all especially, which have these. Now the next one, from a financial or an economic perspective, the rate cuts by the US Federal Reserve and how that could impact India. And uh, let me give you a spoiler, it's actually all positive. Now, the Federal Reserve has confirmed that they could look to lower interest rates by 75 percentage points. This is not 75 percent, this is 0.75. And they could do it by splitting it across two or three rate cuts over the next year. So how is that going to help India? Now, remember that the interest rate of India is higher than the interest rate overseas. So what will happen is you have an American company or an American bank, they are able to raise money at a lower interest rate in the US, but they can actually bring that money and invest it in India where we have higher interest rates. So we can anticipate more foreign inflow, foreign funds inflow into India. This coupled with, you know, the election time, we've already seen it a few days back with, you know, all the state elections which happened, there has been money which has come in. So we can expect a pre-election rally, which will actually take the markets to new heights. So which means that our Nifty, Sensex, our entire stock market could go up with money flowing in from overseas. Now, the next thing which can happen is if money comes in, especially USD comes in, then the USD INR exchange rate is actually moving in favor of the Indian rupee. The Indian rupee is strengthening. Now, if the Indian rupee is strengthening, obviously our import bill reduces. Just to give you an example, if I have to pay $100 and my current exchange rate is say 83 rupees, if that reduces to 82 rupees, instead of paying 100 into 83, I'm paying 100 into 82. So our import bills could go down, our oil bills could go down, even, you know, any foreign debt that we have, servicing that debt, making the interest payments, repaying the principal, that also will go down because we will be using INR and converting it to pay and the exchange rate would have moved in our favor. Another benefit which can come up is specifically for startups, along with investors into the market or into, you know, bonds and all, uh, we can also have investors who invest in Indian startups. And again, that is something which will help them to grow and sort of like, you know, have higher revenue. Lastly, generally for Indians as well, traveling overseas, studying overseas, these are things which would get cheaper as the rupee strengthens. Now, one more thing in international news, Ukraine has got a boost towards becoming an EU member, but it's not getting any aid from Europe at present. Now, all the EU countries have actually favored Ukraine joining the EU with the exception of Hungary. However, the Hungarian PM has actually not vetoed this and uh, all EU countries have essentially said that they are okay with Ukraine becoming an EU member. It's important to understand this has not happened yet. They are saying that they are okay. Now, the the flip side of this or the negative side of this is that Ukraine is not getting any more financial aid to buy weapons from the US or anything else from a war efforts perspective. And that is also impacting their economy, of course, as the war is going on. This is coupled with the fact that uh, even the US refused more aid. In fact, that aid was primarily to buy weapons from the US, as you will read in the article, but that was also denied. So it's a mix of, you know, positive where Ukraine could become a member of the EU, uh, but also negative because they're not getting aid in their war against Russia. So that's it for today. Do sign up at Mockcat if you haven't and subscribe on this channel because we're coming, going to come up with news articles like this every day to help you for your VAT and your interview prep. All the best.